Bonjour et bienvenue à Complètement Chargé. Anyway, hello, welcome to Fully Charged. We're in Paris, so I made a bit of an effort there. Um, we're in Paris at the, the, this very large autonomous vehicle show, really. So it's not so much an autonomous vehicle, it's the future of transport in cities. It's urban transport. And there's hundreds of different displays of amazing bicycle designs, electric cars, electric buses, electric coaches. There's clearly an enormous amount of enthusiasm in Le Grand Hall de la Villette. That's where we are in Paris. It's absolutely nice and it's not raining. That is just such a simple thing, a collapsible bicycle helmet. Because there was a pain in the ass to put in your bag, but that goes flat. But then I, what I want to know is, is this how you put them on? Yes! <laughs> how cool do I look now? I mean, really, uh, cutting a dash. But that is so nice. Then you get to the office. Oh, brilliant idea. So one of the things that's becoming really clear, having a look around this uh, amazing exhibition, is that the, the future of urban transport is, the, the focus in, at this place is clearly two or occasionally three wheels with pedals. There's hundreds of bikes here, electric bicycles, bicycle hire systems, scooter sharing systems, electric, they're all electric. Brilliant. There are some old petrol models. There's this Solex there that I rode many years ago when I was a young man in France, which had a little two-stroke petrol engine that rubbed on the front wheel. It's the most crude thing you've ever seen. When you see it now, it looks like a museum piece. Solex now make electric bikes. Of course they do. Everyone's making electric bikes. And that is such a brilliant way of getting around in the city. So Harold, can you tell me about this caught my eye? It's, it's, I'm assuming it's an electric bike, uh, yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't that... look like one now. <laughs> it is like half bike, half scooter, right. but uh, it's not a bicycle because you can't pedal. There's just two moves. Yeah. First, you unlock the, the front part, <laughs> and then the second part. <laughs> and here you go. Where do you plug it in to charge it, is that? From here. So there's a three pin plug right. and just to a regular Very... out outlet. It's about 20 kilometers. The range. Oh, that's way more than that's, I thought. That's yeah, plenty. That's plenty, yeah. exactly. Show the gear here and now it's ready. <gasps> now it's ready, it's got a little yeah. speedo. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> got to have a go on this. <laughs> oh, mon de dieu. <laughs> I'm trying to work out. Oh, there we go. Oh, pardon. Excuse me. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is absolutely almost. <laughs> This is so easy to ride. This is so nice. Claire, I have no idea what three words means. I don't know, I don't know anything. We decided there should be a universal addressing system. When we think about where the future is going, and both with kind of voice control and with um, autonomy, those are two things where addresses weren't really designed for that. They weren't designed right. for voice and they weren't designed for autonomous vehicles because yeah. they're not very accurate. What we did is we decided to make an addressing system for the entire world. Uh, and the way we did that, yeah, just small just mission. Like that, no, yeah. Um, so the way we did that is we divided the entire world into a grid. It's a grid of 57 trillion squares. Right, okay, it's yep. a lot of squares. It's a lot of squares. Yeah. And every single one is three meters by three meters. So right. this wow. area we're standing in now. And we labeled every single one of those with a completely unique address made of three random words from the dictionary. Wow. So for example, I could tell you to meet me at Apple Banana Spoon. And that's just a simple way of me communicating. Really, what that means, it's actually a way of communicating a 16-digit GPS coordinate. Right. 
So behind the scenes, that's a 16-digit GPS coordinate. I say to you, meet me at Apple Banana Spoon. You can type into our app or lots of other places, and it will take you to that exact three-meter square. Three meters. This basically opens up the world. It means you can go anywhere. You can go to meet your friends for a picnic yes. and as an address. You can find an address for a parking space, but also kind of, th I mean, we're here talking about mobility. The cities of the future, suddenly, if you have a, an autonomous vehicle collecting, you know they're going to come to a three-meter square. Yeah. They're taking you to your door. They're going to drop you at that exact three-meter yes. square. So suddenly, you've got a really accurate way to talk about location. A few weeks ago, Mercedes Mercedes actually announced they're the first car company in the world to bring it into their cars. Wow. So from early next year, you'll be able to get into your Mercedes, uh, press uh, the voice button, say three words, and it will take you to that exact three meter square. Wow, that is annoyingly clever. So Guillaume, I've heard about Autolib cars in Paris for a while. I've never been in one. We followed one last night when we were in a taxi, so I know they, they go along the road. How long has it been going and how popular is it now? Is it? It's very popular and it started in 2011 with a few hundred cars. And now in 2017, we have 4,000 cars running across Paris in the suburb and 6,000 parking spots, which is more than 15,000 rides per day. Wow, yeah. okay. And do they, I mean, generally, in your experience, do the customers then plug them in again? Yeah, they, they're very good about it. Yeah, yeah. Because, but they have to do it, otherwise they still pay. So they have to plug it back, oh, and then clever. they get the texto saying, "Okay, hi uh, Robert, and your yeah. rental has, uh, has, is, uh, has stopped because you plugged it in." And, yeah, right. Exactly. And so, generally speaking, when you get into a, 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 an electric car yeah. in Paris, it's going to be nearly full anyway. It's going to be charged up yeah. enough yeah, yeah. for any journey yeah, yeah. In, in Paris. And if it's not full enough, we just make sure that it is not available for renting. So oh, the see. customer doesn't have to worry anyway. Right. So you'd only be able to go, have access to a car that had enough range yeah, for Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. It's not no. compulsory to book the car in advance. Right. You can do it and you can also book the parking spot in advance. Right. And we are the only one in the world to, do, to be able to do that for, uh, yeah, from A to B. Yeah, exactly. So Stura, you live in Norway, which has become internationally recognized as the country that is really leading the way with the adoption of electric vehicles. I don't think there's anyone else close to you, is there? No, and that's nice in it, a sense. It, it yeah. is very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Presumably you are now facing some problems with access to chargers and... Well, you, well, you know, every problem has a solution. Yeah. And even a solution because now you have, uh, for the first time, a mass market of EVs. Right. Uh, and uh, you have at, at least the possibility to actually make a real good business case. Right. So actually, for the first time, we are actually earning money on putting out more chargers. So I think it's happy news. Right. So, yeah. What a, an incredibly positive approach. It's so you have to be. <laughs> so bring it on. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> it's got to have an impact then, once to get to the levels you are, on the sales of, of, of petrol course. and diesel. I mean, the, the yeah. companies that sell that must have noticed a decrease yeah. in sales. It's maybe a little paradox as a big oil producing nation yes. and exporter, but anyway, we want it because we see we need a change. Yeah. And I think in the future, yes, it will be a drop in the sales of oil. Yeah. We, we just have to prepare. Yes. And that's good for the planet, and that's the whole idea. Yeah. Of course, there are always uh, some people but, um, uh, who think that, well, it started in the West, it was more for the rich people with a second car and so on. Uh, but really, now it's for everybody, right. and especially younger people. They are embracing this right. technology. That's fantastic. And just give me, just so that we can fantasize about it, what the percentage of new car sales in Norway is, what is the percentage that's electric at the moment? This year. Yeah, electric is 46.7%. Uh, <laughs> so it's close to half of all cars sold. And do you know how many diesel cars we are selling? Uh, 21%. It's 21, it so used to be in 2008, 92%. Wow. So something is happening. So Simon, ChargePoint, I've heard of years, but, but you're fairly new in the UK market. I'm we are, yeah. So we're bringing the, the charging station and the 
technology that allows services to be put in. Right. But we're working with local UK installers and, and getting local UK customers right. to actually put the stations in and then and then run them. I mean, you do rapid charges as well? Yep. Or, oh, right, so you do the full range. We do the full charges, range right. because we think the charging is different than combustion engine yeah. fueling. And so it's charging at home, at work, around town and on the go. Right. It's all of those pieces. 80% is home and work, and that's all AC charging. And then around town is is DC medium speed, and then uh, on the go uh, as highways and, and fueling stations, as we now call yeah. it, where you go from 50 kilowatts up to high power charging, maybe 350 right. kilowatts. And now the other thing is is batteries with chargers. I mean, have you have you done any research into that where you have a battery that trickle charging, and then you've got chargers that take the energy from that? Yeah, battery. yeah. Is I have um, a, a couple of different examples actually. We have we have three fast chargers in California where. Um, where they're installed with uh, what's called peak shaving batteries. And so what that does is, is the peak shaving battery system is looking at the total power for the building and, and the chargers as well. And as it reaches a certain peak, then it, it shovels power in from the battery to reduce demand charges. Demand charges are, are very expensive in the US if you use up too much power too quickly. And we're just starting uh, with our fast chargers that, that you see on our booth to uh, accept battery, DC battery in, and then straight through to DC to the car. So that's, that's efficiency in terms of reducing the components that are needed, reduces cost, but also increasing the efficiency because you're not going from DC on the battery to AC back to DC again. Yeah. For example, the Trans-Canada Highway, very little power yeah. available, but you can trickle charge into a battery and, and, and give consumers the freedom to drive right. the Trans-Canada Trans Highway, which is an eco-tourist will yeah. be fantastic. Would be, I'd love to do it. And that's a hell of a long way. That's longer than across America. It, it, <laughs> it gets wider, doesn't it? Canada's wider. The reason why we chose the word autonomy was threefold. One is obviously autonomous vehicles, two is the range of an electric vehicle, it's autonomy. Yeah. And the third and most importantly is that we believe new mobility gives people autonomy. Yes. The freedom of moving from A to B with not having to have a car ownership to do that. Yeah. I think we're going to see you know, two big sort of shifts. The first shift was, you know, we can't have this quality of air pollution, let's get rid of combustion yeah. vehicles. That's happened now, that war has been won, even though that legislation only kicks in in 2025, yeah. 2030, to what, what, to which city. The next big challenge is going to be cities are saying, you can't occupy this much space on our roads, even if it is a Tesla and it's electric. There's yeah. just not enough road surface for you to drive on your own. So the electric vehicle technology enables people to move on a tiny, tiny vehicle. So suddenly these micro-mobility devices are, are really making cities incredibly nimble. You yeah. can really move around very quickly. Yeah. Take it up in the elevator. Yeah, charge um, it next to your desk or next to your yeah, workplace, take, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, those things, I mean, I think that's a, that's a side of electric vehicles I kind of, I didn't see coming. Because yeah. yeah. what you really see it here, there's such a wide range, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you think, well, some of these are going to be we'll never see them again, but some of them are going to be everywhere. Ubiquitous, Absolutely. You know, and, and really I think, common. I think what people don't understand is that they think electric vehicles are a replacement of combustion motor cars, therefore an electric vehicle is a Tesla or a Leaf. Yeah. What we're going to see is an electric vehicle coming from a big bus right the way down to a right. solar wheel. And that's what new mobility is going to be about. Yeah. It's, it's a, a political movement too. Cities yeah. want to democratize the, the, their mobility and transport. Yeah. So we've had an amazing day here at Autonomy in Paris. I came along expecting to see a couple of autonomous cars and an autonomous bus. And what we saw was a completely different take, how electrification of transport can really change the world for the better. Not just cars, not just buses, bicycles, weird skateboards, I wouldn't go on them. What, the single wheel thing? I mean, who's gonna go on that? Young people who are really good at it, really annoying. But amazing stuff, proper grown up, intelligent, mature, concepts that we can be dealing with. So, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charge. Please check out the Patreon link beneath this humble video. And as always, if you have been, merci for watching. <laughs>